Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our reception induction meeting. We'll be starting shortly. We're just waiting for a few more attendees to join us and then we'll be starting the live event. If you have any questions in the meantime, please look at the top where there's some icons. We've got two speech bubbles. One has a question mark in. This is our live Q&A section. If you have any questions, please put them into there and we'll aim to answer as many as we can at the end of the meeting. We'll just wait a few more moments for a few more people to join us and then we'll start. Thank you. Good morning to those of you who are just joining. We're just waiting a few more moments for a few more attendees to be with us and the meeting will be starting shortly. Good morning, everyone. I think we'll make a start. We've got quite a few attendees who have joined and anyone joining after will be joining along with the slides that we are showing. If at any point you have any questions, we've got our Q&A section. If you look at the top of your screen, you will see two speech bubbles with a question mark in the middle. This is where you can post any questions that you may have, and that is throughout the whole of this meeting, and we will try to answer as many as we can at the end. Any questions that you do have at the end that we don't have time for, you can always email into our admin email account and we will answer them as soon as possible. So first of all, welcome to our reception induction meeting. It's lovely to see so many of you here. It's a shame that we can't do this face to face, but at the moment, this is how we are going to be sharing as much information as we can with all of you. So we can make a start. This is a live event, so you will be able to watch this all again on our YouTube channel and you'll be able to keep that and keep coming back to it as much as you need. So introducing our leadership team, first of all, at the top of the page, you can see our head teacher, Mrs. Wakeling, our deputy head teacher, Miss Steele, Myself, Mrs. Bradding, I'm one of the assistant head teachers, and we have Mrs. Weller, who is one of our other assistant head teachers. All of these people are here for you if you ever need to ask any information about what we do at school or if you have a question. Then we have our reception team. 
So we have Miss Milbourne, who is the lead teacher in reception. We have Mrs Welbeck, who's at the other class teacher for RVW. We have Miss Crow and Miss White, who work alongside Miss Milbourne. And we have Miss Hopkins and Mrs Everett, who work alongside Mrs Welbeck. All of these teachers you will begin to meet and learn more about as we start in September, but most of you would have had a meeting with Miss Milbourne or Mrs Welbeck during our live Meet the Teacher events. We have a fantastic team who support all of our families at Quarry Hill Academy. If you ever need support regarding any needs that your child may have, any support for you as a family, these would be the people that you could reach out to. We have Miss Childs, who's our SENCO. We have Mrs Young, who's our family support worker. And we have Mrs North, who's our pupil service support officer. And she also oversees any attendance issues. Once again, these people are here for you in any need that you have regarding your child or your family. They all work throughout the week and can be reachable through our admin accounts. So a brief overview of our reception school day. Children arrive at 9am and our gates are open between 9 and 9.10. We do ask all of our children to arrive within these times and to make sure that they are on time and prompt. As soon as they come into class, learning begins. So they come in and they have settling activities right from when they start in September. These could be activities that are linked to phonics, early writing, mark making, or just exploring the classroom and settling with some puzzles and games. After that, they have a phonics session where when they first come into school, it is whole class. And as they begin to learn some of the initial sounds, they will break off into small groups and be supported for their level of need. This is followed by a literacy input where we, straight away in September we are exploring, exploring books, stories, how to retell those stories and beginning to make early mark making. After that they go off into choosing groups and working with an adult. So uh, once again as soon as they come in September they are in small groups working with their class teacher beginning to develop their early writing and reading skills. Lunchtime is at 12.15 till 1.05. And then after lunch every day we always have relaxation and registration. Relaxation is a fantastic opportunity for children to relax after a busy lunchtime where they join in some meditation, calming activities or just simply resting after a busy lunch. After that they have a math maths input where they'll be learning all of their early number work, capacity and then moving on to beginning to do addition and subtraction. Once again, this is then using choosing time and group work where they'll be working with their class teachers, learning all of those basic skills ready for them to move up to year one. For the rest of the afternoon, it is free choosing where children are able to access all of our areas of our outdoor area and inside, and it's a bit more child led. So they're beginning to choose and decide what things they would like out in the garden, or they might be choosing activities that they would prefer to do inside. We finish our day every day with songs or story time and then 3.20 is when our children are collected and they will go home. Our gates are open until 3.30 and once again we do ask all of our parents to make sure that you are on time to collect your children. Throughout the week children will take part in a range of activities. These ones displayed on the screen at the moment are just the focus tasks but throughout every single day, there are opportunities to cover the whole curriculum. And those are things such as PE, music, understanding of the world, personal, social, emotional development and creative tasks. These are all more child led and children will share in their circle times about what sort of activities they would like to choose. And we prompt them and guide them with things that they may need to develop on. PE takes place once a week and that is with one of our PE coaches. We do have lots of physical education throughout every day, so they are constantly using their muscles and developing, which will help with their early writing. So our learning approach at Quarry Hill Academy, we believe in everything through play. It's at the heart of everything that we do. There are elements of adult led activities, but we see the value and importance of children exploring, investigating and being imaginative. It's here where all of those skills are taught and learnt and children are truly exploring freely. We value the importance of preparing them for their future as well. And we understand that when they go into year one, this can be quite a big transition. 
So from the very beginning, we try to prepare all of our reception children for that experience. And that is where we have more formal learning in the form of class inputs and working with their class teachers. There will be times where they work with their key, their key worker as well, but we like to make sure that they are sitting at a table, they're learning how to sit nicely at the table and what the expectations would be as they transition into their older year groups. This is also the same with working from home. We encourage all of our children to do some home learning every week and that's part of our partnership with parents. We value our partnership with all of our parents and carers and provide lots of opportunities for you to try to come into school. Recently, that hasn't been the case due to COVID-19, but we are hoping that with things forever changing at the moment, these opportunities will hopefully be back again. And these are some of the things that we invite you in to see. If we aren't able to invite you in in person, we do offer these virtually, so you will still be able to see all of the fantastic things that your children are doing at school. Some of the live lessons that we offer for you to have a look at are phonics, maths inputs and literacy inputs. And as we say, if things all go well, we hope that we'll be inviting you in for those very soon and those dates will come out to you by email. So the Early Years Foundation Stage Profile, if you have had any older children that have come through and been in reception before, you might remember some of these. Some of these areas have changed this year due to the Early Years reforms. So starting with the prime areas, there are three prime areas of development that we focus on in reception. That is communication and language, physical development and personal, social and emotional development. Within communication and language, we're focusing on listening and attention, understanding and speaking. And these are the most important skills that we will focus on when your child starts in reception. If your child has been to a nursery or a daycare, they would have explored these areas in quite great detail. But for children who come to us and they've never been to a setting before, it's important for us to make sure that they have these basic skills first before moving on to the specific areas. Physical development has changed this year. Previously, we were focusing on health and self-care and then using their fine motor skills within their own health and self-care. Now we'll be focusing on gross motor development and fine motor development. And this is in readiness for them building all of their muscles in readiness for writing. When we speak about gross motor development, we're talking about them using bikes and trikes, pulling, pushing, and lots of experiences in the garden. When we're speaking about fine motor development, this is when they're in class and we're focusing on picking up small objects using our pincer fingers. And you'll hear that term lots within school of using their pinchy fingers. Encourage this at home. Try activities where you are picking up small grains of rice and moving them from one bowl to another, or maybe pasta shapes, picking those up just using the forefinger and thumb. This is going to build your child's hand muscles in readiness for writing. Equally with gross motor skills, we ask that during the holidays, make sure that your children are having experiences outside, possibly going to the park where they can climb and jump off of things. Anything that is developing their gross motor skills, so that's their shoulders, their backs, their arms, all of those skills are going to then transcend down to their hand muscles in readiness for writing. Personal, social and emotional development has changed this year. There'll be more focus on children's self-regulation and this also comes in part with the two academic years that we've had with children possibly being at home for a period of lockdown. So we're focusing on children being able to self-regulate and having the support that they need if they are becoming tearful or upset and what they can do or who they can reach out to to be able to help them with this. Managing self and building relationships. Some of our children we know have missed some of their schooling in nurseries or may not have attended any settings. And that's why it's so important this year that we make sure that we are focusing on these areas of development to help your children in readiness for year one. Then we have the specific areas. And these are areas which you might be more familiar with if you have older children or you're familiar with school age children. We cover literacy, maths, understanding of the world and expressive arts and design. Understanding of the world covers all of those topics such as history, geography, science, technology and expressive arts and designs are your more creative activities that you might be more familiar with. In literacy, we will be focusing this year on comprehension, word reading and writing, 
And this is right from the start of their reception lives. So they will be listening to stories and answering simple questions about who the characters are, where they are, what they might be wearing. And we encourage you to do this if you're sharing books at home and we'll give you lots of information about how to do this. In maths, numerical patterns is something that is new for reception. And this is focusing on the value of a number and what that means. So when we say the number five, do children truly understand what five means and what that looks like? And we'll be using lots of songs, rhymes and objects to help them understand the true value of numbers and not just learning them by saying them in rote. Past and present has been added to the curriculum for reception and is a huge part of us reflecting on what has happened in the past and what is happening in our current lives. We look at things that may have happened in their own experiences from when they were babies compared to how they are now. And then we look towards the future of them moving up into our Bradley campus and being ready for year one. So lots of exciting opportunities and lots of experiences that we're going to be sharing with our reception pupils. Assessment is an important part of schooling where we can track and monitor how our children are getting on and what things they may need support in. This has changed slightly this year as well. So we have regular assessments that will be carried out throughout their schooling and these happen every half term. These will be shared with you regularly through either parent consultations or by us sending small reports home. This year we'll be working on working towards or being on track. And this has changed from previous years where we would tell you the ages and stages. Now it's just a case of working towards or being where they should be for their age. To meet age related expectations, children should remain on track throughout their schooling, and this would be the expected level of progress for their age. Key workers will monitor this through lots of play and discussion opportunities. It's not through lots of testing. This is done through them playing and experiencing within school. Teachers will then make their teacher judgments based on their strong knowledge and understanding of their key children and the level that they show within group work on their own and with the whole class. The EF, EYFS reforms now look for assessments to be mainly from teacher knowledge, which we're really pleased about because all of our key workers get to know our children really well. And we also ask for support from parents to let us know what things they're doing well at home. And this is used within our judgments too. So in reception, we use something called flags and this is on our tapestry monitoring system. If pupils are working towards in any particular area of learning, this will be classed as a flagged area. This is nothing to worry about. This is just for key workers to be able to identify areas that children need extra support in, or maybe they might need more opportunities to develop. And this is logged on our tapestry, which is our online journal programme. You will have links to this and you'll be able to see this regularly so that you can see what your children are able to do at school and what they might need to help fill in any gaps in. Regular monitoring through observation will be completed and children will be supported to become on track and we'll communicate this with you as we go through the year. Outdoor learning is a huge part of what we do at Quarry Hill Academy. We have wonderful facilities here where we have lots of different levels for children to explore. We do play outside in all weather conditions, so we do ask parents to make sure that children are appropriately dressed to suit all weather conditions. And these are some of the things that you might like to bring in to make sure that they can join in in all of the things we have to offer. We ask for a waterproof coat, and this could be a winter coat for the winter months, and it could be just a thin waterproof jacket that they keep in their bag at all times in case the weather was ever to change throughout the day. We ask for welly boots to be brought into school every day and this is just to make sure that if they are in our mud garden that they can have the right shoes on and they're not getting their shoes muddy for when they come back down to the classroom. Sun hats and sun creams are really important for those summer months but obviously with our weather, it can be forever changing. So if this is something that you'd like to keep in school, just making sure it's clearly labelled, we can keep that within their coat pegs so that we know that we always have that and we'll regularly update you if sun creams need to be changed. Learning outdoors is a valuable way for children to learn and it opens up for them to have riskier play opportunities in the fresh air and having open-ended possibilities. 
For some of our children, we know that they may not have access to outdoor areas at home, and that's why we try to make sure the opportunities we're giving our reception children are of the highest level to make sure that they are experiencing what can be on offer outdoors. Another option for parents, if they would like to, is waterproof trousers. These are really, really useful for us. We find that in the winter months when it does get quite messy and muddy up in our mud kitchen, if they've got some waterproof trousers on, it's protecting their clothes. It means that they can roll around, enjoy the outdoor area without worrying about getting wet or dirty at the end of it. And adults are encouraged to do the same too, to be good role models for all of our children. So it's something we do ask our parents to have a think about before starting in September. We have lots of engaging topics throughout the year for our reception pupils. And here are some of the things that we'll be doing next year. When they first come in in autumn one, we'll be looking about all about me. And this is where we get to know your children. They get to know us and we get to know about their lives at home. In autumn two, we look at traditional tales where we're looking at stories that they might have grown up hearing at home. If they've been to nurseries, they would have used these stories lots within their play. And it's about us extending those opportunities where they begin to retell the stories independently, moving into writing about them and learning how to use props to enhance their play. In spring one, we look at people who help us and superheroes. We like to refer superheroes to our parents and to say that that is the first job that our children will ever see is the fantastic job that parents have in raising them and supporting them in starting school. During this topic, we hope that we'll be able to invite some of you in. If you would like to share what your job is or what you have to do as part of your job, we do have a day called Careers Day where parents are invited in to share their experiences and hopefully give our children something to aspire towards. We encourage our parents who are stay at home parents to also join in this event because being a stay at home parent is one of the first jobs that a child will experience. And we love to value that in all of the support that you have given them before they come to us. We hope that with COVID-19, this will be a possibility this year, but we will update you as and when. In spring two, we have our topic called Explorers, and this is where we take a journey around the world, exploring different terrains, different countries, and learning how to say a few phrases in different languages. We are very proud of our diverse culture that we have at Quarry Hill Academy. Lots of our families come from lots of different places and speak many different languages. We hope that by using this topic, we can encourage our children to learn just a few phrases in different languages so that when they go out into the world, they're able to say something to someone else in their home language, building that bridge and that inclusivity for everyone. These things are simple things like hello, goodbye, please and thank you. And we encourage parents to teach us anything about their home language that they think we would be able to use within the classroom. In summer one, we have our topic growing, where we will be exploring how not only plants and animals grow, but how we grow as well from a baby all the way to being a grown up and then on into our adulthood. In summer two, we have a fantastic topic called Splash. Our children are currently exploring this this half term. We do get a little bit wet in this um, particular topic, so please make sure you are bringing in a change of clothes during this time. They will experience capacity, filling and pouring, and learning about what water can do in terms of powering equipment, ready for harvesting and crops. It's a really exciting topic and our children always love learning about what lives in the sea. And we have lots of enrichment days to encourage our children to learn about water. Home learning is a really important part of what we do at Quarry Hill Academy. And once again, this is preparing our children for moving on to year one. We like to work really closely with our parents during this, and we encourage all of our children to engage in the following activities. Every week, your child will bring a reading book home that is linked with their current level for phonics. We will also encourage them to borrow books from our library and share these with parents every evening at home. We make sure this is just one book for the week so that you can repeatedly read this with your children. It may seem like they are just reading the same book over and over again, but this experience is vital for them beginning to relay text and being able to relay a story confidently. If they are beginning to read it by memory, 
That is fantastic and that's exactly what we want them to do. Children who are confident in picking up stories and looking at pictures to be prompted by what they need to say are children who are going to go on to looking at words and remember them by sight. And that is what we encourage during the early stages of reception. We ask parents to log any reading that you do at home on our Go Read app, which is very much like a reading journal, but this is all done online. And it means that you can read extra books at home and add those onto Go Read so that we can see if you're reading any other texts at home. We do not expect our children to be reading words straight away. So if you're just looking at the pictures with your children and they're starting to make up a story, that is fantastic. And that's exactly what we want them to do in the early stages when they start. We'll begin to advise you when it's time for your child to begin blending and segmenting, and we'll give you tips and tools to be able to help you do this at home. Whilst you're reading, make sure you're asking your children questions about the books. It could be simple questions to begin with. How many characters are there? Where are they? What are they wearing? This just helps them to retrieve information from text and pictures and be able to show their understanding of what they've read. Every week we send home newsletters that have a big question and we ask parents to support their children with answering this. This could be making something at home and bringing it in to share or maybe just having something to share verbally within our circle times. We ask that these are recorded on our tapestry programme, which is our online learning journal, and we'll be coming back to that shortly in a moment. This year, we also have another learning platform, which is called Purple Mash, and this has a range of tasks that are very child friendly and fun for children to try at home. These will be developing not only their maths and literacy skills, but also their ability to use a computer and to programme. So it's definitely something to have a look at and have a try with your children. All of these logins will be given to you in September when they start. So tapestry is something that we used for the first time last year and it worked really successfully. This is an online learning platform where we can share with you photos, videos of your children's learning, observations and for parents to upload pictures and videos from things that they've been doing at home. You will receive regular updates and communication from the teachers every day from what your children are experiencing in class. We found that this was a really nice way for parents to feel comforted when their children start school to see that they are OK and they are settled in class if they have come in a little bit upset in the mornings. It's a quick way for you to log in and just check to see what your children are doing, but also for us to monitor and see if there are anything that we can support with at home or for you to support us with within school. Logins and passwords will be given to you when your child starts in September, and we ask for all of our parents to sign a form to say that they are happy for their photos and videos to be used on their journals. This is a secure platform, which means that only yourself and the teachers will have access to your child's journal. This is not shared with anybody else, and we ask the same of all of our parents, that this is not shared on any social media platforms and is just kept for the school and parent use. The traditional learning journal book that you might have seen if your child has been in a nursery will be used within the reception classroom, but we will call this a celebration book. And this is where we'll showcase any special milestones for your child. That could be the first piece of writing that they do, first piece of mark making, any maths or science or history that they create will go into their celebration book and will be passed on to their year one teachers before coming home to you. This will all be able to be kept and we'll share this with you throughout their time at school. <clears throat> So this is the part that parents always want to know is what things do you need to do to prepare your child for September? We ask you to help your child with their self-help skills. And this is by doing things such as practicing independent dressing and undressing. It's really important that as children come to school, they are able to do this for themselves, especially as we have PE, they need to be able to understand how to undo their own buttons, zips, and any other fastenings that they may have. We ask all of our children to have Velcro shoes, which will support them to be able to put their shoes on and off independently. We ask all parents to ensure that children are independent in using the toilet. 
And this does mean that we do expect all of our children to be out of nappies or pull ups before they come to us in September. They should be able to use the toilet on their own and be able to clean themselves independently as well. We will obviously be there to guide and support, but this is something we do expect our children to do for themselves. If you need any support with this, please contact myself or Miss Charles at Arsenko and we'll be able to give you guidance before the summer holidays in how to do this. We ask that all uniform is clearly labelled using your child's name. Some companies will now have a picture next to the name, which is a great way for reception children to remember that that is their item of clothing if they're not familiar with their own name at the moment. So that would be something that I would suggest looking for. Encourage your children to feed themselves using a knife and fork or to use finger foods if they're having a packed lunch at school. We are not able to feed any of the children within our care, so it is really important that they're able to do this for themselves. Other things that you can do to prepare your child for September is talk to them about the daily routine, share this video with them so that they can see their class teachers and who will be working with them. Practice find their own name and begin to write their first name so that they've got that first skill ready to start school. Enjoy sharing reading books together and talking about books and having a love of reading before they start school and develop a good sleeping routine so that they are ready to get up in the morning, get themselves dressed, have their breakfast and that they're going to bed at a suitable time ready to start the day the following day. The most important thing we ask of all of our parents is to enjoy your holidays and look forward to starting school. We know that not only the children will be finding this a daunting prospect, but parents do worry as well about the first start of school. Not being able to attend the school for sessions will make some parents a little bit nervous, and we understand that you might have some questions about that, and hopefully we'll be able to talk about that at the end of the meeting. But if you do have any questions in the meantime, please reach out to myself and I'll try and speak to you and guide you about how we'll be transitioning and the support that will be in place for your children. Uniform is really important at Quarry Hill Academy and we do encourage every child to make sure that the following items are adhered to. This helps our children to feel part of our school and in readiness for when they move up to the Bradley campus. So for boys, we've got a navy sweatshirt complete with a QHA logo or a navy fleece, white polo shirts with the logo or without, grey trousers, grey summer shorts in the summer months, plain black shoes, and we do ask for no trainers for reception, please, and make sure that if they do have laces that they are black. We prefer for children to have Velcro shoes for reception, just to make it easier for them to take them on and off. No logo should be on the shoes as much as possible, but any school shoes that are sold in places like Tesco's, Asda's, Morrison's, they are very, very good at making sure that they are compliable with school rules so that all of those types of shoes are acceptable as long as there's no colours on them, please. We do ask for sun caps with our QHA logo on. Socks must be plain grey or white with no logos and children will need a book bag with the school logo on. Similarly for girls, girls would be expected to wear a navy cardigan with the school logo, a navy fleece, white polo shirts, grey skirts, pinafore dresses or trousers, a blue checked summer dress in the summer months and plain black shoes. So for the girls as well, we do ask that they are Velcro. Some of the Dolly shoes that can be bought do come with Velcro, but some of them do not have this. We ask that you make sure there is a fastening across the top of their foot just to make sure when they are running around in the garden that they're not going to slip off and hurt their feet. So please make sure that all shoes are enclosed, no open toes or open heels, please. Same again, sun hats, socks must be plain grey or white with no logos, tights can be plain grey or navy and they need a book bag. We also ask from the start of September that all children bring to school a school bag with their PE kit in. And here you can see some of the things that they might need. A white QHA PE shirt complete with the logo, navy PE shorts and then indoor plimsolls. We do ask that you make sure you check your child's plimsolls regularly. Their feet do grow very, very quickly and it would be uncomfortable for them to have to wear a shoe that is too tight. 
your key worker will advise you when their shoes are becoming a bit tight and then we do ask that those are changed as much as possible. The PE bag must be our school logo PE bag and all of these things can be found on the below site. We also have some secondhand school uniform that you can buy. Each item is 50p and you can see Mrs Young for any of those items if you should need them. So what does your child need to bring to school with them every day? Due to COVID-19, we have reduced the amount of things that are coming to school and we ask you to make sure that it's only these items that are on the list that are coming in every day. Even with things changing with COVID, we would like to keep to these minimal items just to make sure that there's not too much that your child is bringing to school. They will need a navy blue school book bag with the logo, a water bottle clearly labelled with your child's name, waterproof clothing for wet weather conditions, and Wellington boots clearly labelled and a sun hat and sun cream for the warmer weather months. Snack is provided for all EYFS children and they will have a choice of milk, their water bottle, toasted bagel and fruit. Milk is free for all of our children up until the age when they turn five. Once your child reaches five, it is a parent's choice. If they would like their child to continue having milk, they will need to pay for the milk and then they'll be able to have that daily. Children will also need to bring a packed lunch if they are staying all day and we also have hot meal options which we'll be coming to in a moment. So at Quarry Hill Academy we do offer school dinners to all of our reception pupils. Reception all the way up to year two are entitled to a free school meal and that is a hot meal and menus can be found on our website and leaflets will be given out in the start of the year in September. If you are entitled to any benefits, you may also be entitled to free school meals and I would encourage all of our parents to make sure that you do look into this to see if you are eligible because this will continue with your child all the way to year six. Even though children are entitled for a free meal up until year two, if you are eligible for free school meals, please make sure you are claiming this right from the start in reception. This is vital for us as a school because it means that every child who is entitled to free school meals, we receive £1,300 of funding towards supporting those pupils within our school. This offers us the opportunity to do all the wonderful things that we do at Quarry Hill, offering quality first teaching, exciting opportunities for them within the school, having people come into school for special events and making sure that they are getting any support that they may need whilst they're here. So why have a school dinner? We encourage all of our children to try them. Even if you think they might not like them, it's worth giving it a go. While they are free, it's something that you can try and there might be certain days that your child will like the menu and other days where they might not. But it gives them a special time to sit with other children and enjoy a healthy meal. It encourages children to be sociable, learn table manners and to join in with the rest of their peers. We find that lots of children who might be fussy eaters at home, when they have a school meal at lunchtime, they're encouraged to try and explore new foods because other children around them are doing the same thing. And it actually helps children to try that away from the home. And it means that you're not having to make those meals at home and worry about them not eating them. We will then support you and share with you any foods that they have enjoyed so that you can enjoy them at home as well. There are always three options to the menu for children to choose and one of which will always be a vegetarian option. So it's definitely something to have a look at in the start for September. We understand that this might not be for every child and you might be concerned that your child wouldn't eat a school dinner and that's absolutely fine. If your child would prefer to have a home pack lunch, we ask that you provide a healthy pack lunch that contains no chocolate, sweets or sugary drinks. And here are some options and some ideas that you might want to try for your child. We ask that all of the food in their lunch boxes are things that they can pick up and eat themselves and that they are cut into the appropriate size. And these are things like group grapes, small snacks, apples, just so that there are no choking hazards within their lunch. Children are encouraged to be independent when feeding and it's important that the size of their food is what they can manage themselves. Some of our parents have asked if they can bring in thermos flasks with warmer items in. 
we would also encourage our reception children to have a hot meal if they are not someone who would eat sandwiches. But yes, we can have some items that are bought in a small thermos flask that the children can eat themselves. But we do encourage the children, if they don't like cold food, to try a hot dinner instead. We are a nut free school, so please make sure that when you're packing as a pack lunch, that you are looking at the packets and checking that they are nut free and not made in a nut production area. That's no nuts, chocolate spreads or any other nut products. So these can be things such as cereal bars, other items that might be snacks, just making sure that you are checking the labels before packing them. We have some children who have very severe nut allergies and we do have to take those items out of the lunchbox and inform parents that they cannot be eaten whilst at school. So please check before packing. Moving on to some of the admin questions that we normally have. So attendance is really important at Quarry Hill Academy and we want to make sure that right from the start of school, children are aware that they must be on time and ready for learning. We don't want any of our children to miss out on any of the fun activities that are happening from the moment they walk into school. So for reception pupils, school will open at 9 a.m. and the doors will close promptly at 9.10. So it's important to make sure that they are on time and ready for learning. Anyone after this time will be marked as late and lates are monitored and continuous lates will be discussed with the class teacher and parents. If your children are absent for any reason or unwell, please make the office aware and that is our Bradley office. Our Dell office is no longer open for phone calls, so all of our calls go to our Bradley campus. Please inform them on the first day of your child's absence and let us know why your child will be absent that day. If they're going to be absent for the following day or any other days after that, we must be called every day to just update us and let us know when they will possibly be returning. If your child has had sickness or diarrhoea, we ask that you keep them home for a period of 24 hours and from when the symptoms first arise. Once they are no longer being sick or having an upset stomach, they can return back to school. Obviously, recently with the past year, we have still been focusing on COVID-19 symptoms and this will continue for next year. So we ask that if yourself, your child or anyone you've been in contact with is displaying symptoms of COVID-19, that you speak to us as soon as possible and that you keep your child home until they've had a test to ensure that they are not obviously positive. If it comes back negative, they can return back to school straight away. This guidance is forever changing and we will update you with any changes to our school policies in regards to COVID-19 symptoms. Medical matters are really important for us to know when your child starts in September and we thank any of you who have already shared this with your parent meetings or when you were filling in your applications. Any medical needs must be shared with the Bradley office prior to your children starting in September. And these are things such as allergies, intolerances or medications that they may be taking for a period of time. Asthma pumps and EpiPens must be kept at school at all times and must be clearly labelled as prescribed by your doctor. We will not be able to administer these without those things and without the proper forms being filled in so that we can administer. Any prescribed medication that you are given by a doctor must be passed through the Bradley office before we are able to help the minister. We are not able to give any oral medications to children and we do ask that if this is needed during the school day that the correct dose is measured out into a syringe which will be placed into our school fridge and for children to be able to administer that themselves with the guidance of an adult. If they are not able to administer this themselves we ask for parents to come up to the school and do this for them. As much as possible, if they are requiring something such as Calpol, we do ask for you to let us know why they are needing it, because if it is something regarding a temperature, this could obviously be a symptom of COVID-19 or could be an insight that there may be infection and it would be something that would need to be consulted by a doctor if they are continuing to have a high temperature. Please ensure that any medications that come to school are kept up to date and all of your records are fully up to date at our office to make sure that anything we are using is okay to be used. 
we as a school will constantly check all medications and let you know when anything is coming to the end of its shelf life. So this is something that some parents may still be concerned about and hopefully these points will make you feel more secure about some of the measures that we have in place and will continue to have in place in the start of September. COVID-19 has obviously been a big topic of discussion for the past year and it has made many changes to our daily lives. We obviously know that with government guidance currently changing, we are not able to change any of our risk assessments until we've had government guidance regarding schools. So these measures will be in place until those changes have been communicated with us. We will obviously update you as soon as we have that information. So at school, current guidance says that we should keep children in year group bubbles and this will continue in September. Your children will be in a class group of 60 children. We have an open plan classroom, so all of those children in reception will be classed as one year group bubble. This means that they are able to interact with each other as normal. They can play and engage and swap classrooms as part of that year group bubble. And we ask that any of the parents who come on site remain distance from each other and we are currently using face masks on our site. We will of course update you if this changes nearer September. We'll be taking extra measures to ensure the safety of all pupils, staff and families over the coming months and making sure that these measures are protective and suitable for the needs and ages of our children. We want to make sure that their transition to school life is a good one and that they feel happy and safe at school and that parents feel supported if they have any questions. And these are some of the other measures that will be taking place within the classroom. Currently, we have staggering for all of our children on the Dell campus. We have a preschool, a nursery and reception all moving around our site in the morning and at the end of the day. So we will have reception children just coming into school from 9 till 9.10. And this means that our preschool and nursery parents will be off site and there will be no crossover between adults. This will be the same as you are collecting. So we ask parents to not arrive before 3.20, allowing all of our preschool and nursery parents to leave before reception parents come on site. We do have a one way system and there'll be lots of staff to guide you and prompt you of where you need to go. Parents are still being advised to keep distance from other parents and only one parent is allowed to pick up and drop off at any one time. Obviously, this will be changed if government guidance says so, and we will communicate this with you once we have that information. On arrival, we're asking our children to ensure they're washing their hands with hand gels and making sure their lunch bags, book bags are all put into the relevant boxes and trolleys and that everything we do in class is making sure that they are following that morning routine so that there is no crossover and making sure everything is clean. If you have any questions for staff, please make sure that these are only short questions in the morning due to our time restrictions. And if you have any further questions that you need a bit more time to ask, myself, Mrs Bradding, will be on the playground every morning if you'd like to come and speak to me or if you'd like to book an appointment, this can be done through our Bradley office. This reduces the amount of time that adults are on the playground and allows for your children to be safely dropped off and to start their learning straight away, giving them maximum opportunities in the time that they are at school. Staggered lunches will also form part of our COVID plans. And this is making sure that our nursery children who share the hall at lunchtime have left the hall and everything has been cleaned before reception come in at 12.15. Children will always remain in their bubbles, even when playing outside. And we have great facilities to be able to make sure that children have wide open spaces that are just for them for the whole day. So they will have their own play space outside that they can access at the same time as nursery will be using their garden. Children remain in their class bubbles and they'll be able to have free play opportunities, guided work and outdoor play whilst remaining in these bubbles. All resources that they will be using will be regularly cleaned, as well as the toilets, tables and chairs. Anything that's not able to be fully cleaned will be quarantined for 72 hours, making sure that anything your children are playing with 
is correctly quarantined or cleaned to avoid any cross contamination. The most important thing that we'll be encouraging and we have been encouraging all the time that we've had our little ones at school is hand washing. This not only forms part of their health and self care, but it's in promoting the importance of understanding that with COVID-19, we need to make sure that clean hands are a priority. We'll have regular hand washing opportunities. There are hand gels dotted around the whole school and children are regularly encouraged to use these and staff monitor this and show good practice by doing it themselves. So symptoms of COVID-19. If you, your child or a family member or someone you've come in contact with has been displaying any of the symptoms of COVID-19, we ask that you inform us as soon as possible. We ask that you keep your child at home and follow government guidance to get tested as soon as possible. Things that you'd be looking for are high temperature, a persistent cough, and this is something that is a dry cough, a loss of change in taste and smell. Children do display other symptoms, but we are aware that sometimes this could just be a common cold, and this is something that we do expect when children start school, but we do ask you to keep vigilant and keep looking out for these symptoms within yourself, family members and your children, and to just be cautious as we step into a time where restrictions might be being lifted, we all still need to do our part in making sure we're keeping vigilant. If any of your children begin to display these symptoms whilst at school, we will contact you as soon as possible and ask you to come and collect them and give you advice and guidance on what to do next. And this could be asking you to receive a test and letting us know if that is positive or negative. If they are still unwell, but it is negative, we ask that you keep them at home and let them rest and feel better before sending them in. If it was a positive case, we as a school have lots of things in place and have a risk assessment which can be found on our school website of the next process that we would do in making sure that that bubble is closed down and advice is given to parents on what to do next and all of this information can be found on our website. So important dates for you now is that we'll be looking forward to welcoming your children starting with us on Thursday the 2nd of September 2021. Children do come into school straight away full time. We do not have a staggering process. We believe that this is a good way for our children to get fully immersed into school life. So if you prepare your children that they will be having their full day at school, they'll be coming to school having lunch. It's going to be a really exciting time. We will support your children the whole way and we'll talk to you if you have any concerns or queries about them starting school. Our term times can be found on our school website and these are communicated with you when you start. We do ask that any holidays that you may have are booked during holiday time and not during the school term. Any holiday absence must be asked for in advance and this is through the Bradley office where they'll give you a form to complete which is given to our head teacher. And that is everything for today. I know that's been lots of information and hopefully if you need to go back through this video, you'll be able to watch this on our YouTube channel and answer any of the questions that you may have. We're now going to open up for a few moments our questions and answers section. So at the top of your screen, there are two speech bubbles with a question mark at the top. If you have any questions, if you'd like to type those into the chat now, we'll be able to answer those with you. We just wait to see if we have any questions coming through. Once again, if you do not want to ask any questions now, you can always contact us through our admin email accounts and I will try and get back to you as soon as possible. And once again, you can go back through this video so you can see all of that information again, just in case there's anything that you might need. We'll wait a few more moments just to see if there are any questions before closing our induction meeting. So hopefully there are no questions that anybody has and hopefully this PowerPoint has given you all the information that you needed. If you do have any questions after this meeting that you suddenly think of,
please contact us through our admin email account, which can be found on our school website. We ask all of our parents to keep looking on our Twitter page. This will have lots of up and coming events and any things that you might find interesting. I will be posting information for parents about toileting, about starting school, and this will be throughout the holidays where I'll be posting information. So please make sure you check our Twitter page. We've just had a question come through about can we leave their boots in school? Absolutely. Yes, that would be the best idea is if you can buy a cheap pair of Wellington boots and you want to leave them at school, please feel free to do that. It means that you're not having to carry them back and forth and they're always here for your children. So thank you for that question. We have got a question about the school uniform website. We will have this on our YouTube channel for where you'll be able to go and have a look at the website again, but I will see if I can put that on our Twitter page for you and I will see if we can send that out in any correspondence we send for starting school. So I will do that for you. Uh, the question also says, do all jumpers and cardigans need to have Quarry Hill badges? Yes, we do ask that all of our badges are on all of the uniform that's external. So the polo tops do not need them but jumpers and cardigans, please make sure they do have the logo. That is just making children feel part of the school. It's obviously having that emblem on their clothes, promoting Quarry Hill Academy and making them feel part of the Quarry Hill family. And more so when they move upstairs, everybody looks the same. So yes, please, as much as possible. We do understand that some of these jumpers can be a little bit expensive. So look around, see if you can find them. We do have them secondhand if you can't get them uh, from a shop. So they are 50p each if you would like to come and get them from our school. Thank you for that question. Uh, we have a question here that says if COVID restrictions are lifted, will we be able to give something in writing for homework? Um, at the moment, everything is done online. We do have a homeschool book which we were using prior to the COVID restrictions. If restrictions are lifted and we have guidance about that from school, then we may possibly go back to doing things on paper. But we do find that with things being online, we're able to see a lot more of what you can do at home. Um, and this is through videos and things like that. So some of the homework that we give our reception children isn't in the form of a worksheet. It might be a question or a task for them to do. So we try to avoid worksheets as much as possible because we're promoting a love of play and learning through play. So most of the time it would not be something that would be on paper. As we go towards the end of the year, we will be offering some forms of paperwork because that's helping them transition to year one. So I hope that's answered your question. Thank you for that. Um, we have another question here. Uh, a little while ago, th this person spoke to someone about a breakfast club was being explored. Is there any updates on whether this might be started? This is something we are still exploring and we are hoping to have. So as soon as that has been finalised and all of the details have been put in place, we will communicate that with parents. We are very keen to have a breakfast club. We think it will be really beneficial for our children and for parents and we will communicate that with you as soon as that has been finalised. Thank you for that question. Uh, we've got a question here about a school uniform grant. Where do we get information on this? So what I'll do for you is I will see if we can get some of our admin team to get a bit of information up for you on that. And we might be able to put some links onto Twitter or send something out through email just so you have a bit more information on school uniform. We do have our secondhand shop at school. So if you are finding getting uniform tricky or you need some, just you want to have extra uniform, please make sure you come and see us. We do have quite a lot at the moment, but this does go very, very quickly. They are 50p an item. So please come and see Mrs Young and you'll be able to have a look at what we have. Um, you can pre-order that so you don't have to pay straight away. We can hold that for you and then when you come, we can sort that out when you want to come and collect it. So there's lots of ways that we can support with uniform as much as possible. I hope that's answered your question. Thank you. OK, we've got no further questions in the chat box. I'll just wait a few more moments in case there are any other questions that anyone may have. But thank you so much for all of you attending. It's lovely having you here live. 
For anyone who is watching this after the live event, please make sure that if you have any questions that have not been answered, that you contact myself, Mrs Bradding, through the admin email accounts, and I will try very hard to contact you back as soon as possible. We do close on the 16th of July, which means that from that point, our school office will be closed. So I will be checking the admin email through the holidays, but this will be intermittent. We won't have any phone lines open. So if you do have a question, make sure that that is communicated to us before our closing day, please. We do not want to have any questions missed during our holiday time and hopefully everything has been answered for you so far. There are no further questions coming through. So thank you so much to everyone who has joined. Have a wonderful summer. We are really looking forward to welcoming your children in September. Have a lovely break and we'll see you soon. Thank you.